Hey what is up mortals it's TC Crew here and before we get into today's video there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So if you're interested go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly if this video hits 500 likes by the end of the week we will continue this what if. Thirdly if you didn't know only 41.3% of you guys are subscribed to us. So please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. The unthinkable had happened. Villains managed to infiltrate a secured location like the USJ and a large group at that. As Aizawa was fighting off legion upon legion of criminals and various near do wells, he had issued the space hero to escort the students in evacuating the facility. As the students tried to evacuate alongside 13, the sentient dark cloud had taken notice of the current fleeing prey. In an instant, the miasma warped itself in front of the group of potential victims, attempting to escape the facility, stopping them in their tracks. A pleasure to meet you, the dark cloud stated, his polite voice having condescending overtones. We are the League of Villains. As this cloud of sapient evil had spoken, the students that were its literal captive audience had been frozen in their tracks. Their nerves were screaming at them to run, each thought in their head telling them to scatter. But their muscles had been tightened to such a degree that it prevented them from acting on their most desired thoughts. I know it's impolite, but we decided to let ourselves into this haven of justice to say hello. Though the students couldn't see it, it was clear to them that this specter was flashing them the cruelest of smirks. And besides, isn't this a fitting place for All Might, the symbol of peace, to take his last breath? These children didn't know what to do, as the black fog was talking about All Might and his apparent absence. All these kids could do was look on in abject horror. They came to kill All Might. Normally a notion like this would be of no concern to anyone, as the blonde superhero was practically a god to the eyes of the public. However, coupled with these villains' surprising amount of intuitiveness and their tenacious cruelty, they couldn't help but wonder. Can All Might be killed? As the shadowy figure moved to attack, Thirteen had tried to unleash her quirk, Black Hole. But before she could do anything, the two most reckless students, Bakugo and Kurishima, had launched themselves forward at the cloud. Due to their careless attitude, the aberration began to cover the class of children, swallowing them whole and warping them to various parts of the facility. The only ones spared were a handful of students, including Tenya Ida, Ochako Uraraka, and Rikido Sato. This was thanks to the former's incredible speed. Midori was transported to the lake portion of the USJ. As he crashed into the water, he had been met with a half hammerhead shark man swimming at him at full force. His jaws widened as he prepared to maim the green-haired boy, and Izuku couldn't react fast enough to stop this Tennyson of the deep. However, when all seemed lost, Suyu Asui had suddenly delivered a kick to the shark man's head. The force sent the watery thug careening away from the two. Hey Midoriya! The frog girl greeted. Shortly after doing so, she grabbed onto her classmate using her long prehensile tongue. As if on cue, the white-haired student sent himself to the two at practically mock speed. The velocity at which the boy had sent himself was enough to send both him and the two classmates onto the nearby boat. Thanks for the save, Asui. And uh... Midoriya trailed off, trying to remember the ever-stoic classmate's name. He couldn't forget the boy's sheer presence, though he wasn't great with names. Zaiku. Right, Zaiku. The dead-eyed schoolboy said in response. Midoriya replied, his awkwardness practically shining through his mouth with each syllable spoken. It's no problem at all. Suyu uttered. And please call me Su. Looking over the sides of the vessel, they noticed hordes of criminals circling around the triad of children like sharks that caught the scent of blood. They all flashed the children with malicious smiles, cold snares, and ravenous hunger. The only one of the trio who didn't look outwardly threatened by the wave of aquatic menaces was the icy Zaiku, though even he was at a pause. After a while of this constant toying around, the white-haired student displayed a glimmer of impatience. 
Extending a hand outward, pockets of air began to form within his palm. Shot after shot, each of their air bullets would narrowly miss their target. With the marine malefactors swimming out of the way with each air bullet that headed towards them. After about five shots, Zaiku lowered his arm. Slippy bastards. The normally tacky turned boy growled. They aren't making an attempt to climb up the boat. Midoriya thought out loud. It's obvious they have an advantage there in the water. This caught the attention of both the frog girl and the quiet boy. They both noticed that as well. But it was apparent the green-haired student was trying to come up with a plan. Huddling together, they both decided to discuss their quirks amongst themselves. After Suyu had discussed her quirk, Midori was the second to volunteer information about his to the small group of three. I can shoot flames up to 20 meters and they get up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, Izuku stated. I can shoot them for about 5 minutes, but if I do it for too long, I'll start to burn myself. Zaiku took a moment. It looked as though he was thinking about what he should say. Before long, he opened his mouth to speak. I can create air bubbles within my palms, as you too could plainly see, but it takes a decent amount of time to form one, depending on the size, on average about 15 seconds each. The three took about another moment to create a cohesive plan amongst themselves. Though as they did so, one of the villains had gotten impatient and began forming a giant appendage created by hardened controlled water. You're taking too long! The watery near duel shrieked, his voice reflecting his unhinged desire to do the children harm. Considering your flames can reach that temperature, I would direct your flames at the water they're in. Zeku suggested to his green-haired compatriot, get it at least simmering temperature, boiling is ideal. But won't that cause serious injury to them? Izuku queried. He didn't enjoy harming things with his quirk fellow humans most especially. Even if his fury temper got the better of him at times. The white-haired boy replied, If they're smart, their self-preservation instincts won't allow that. They'll swim out to the shore as soon as it gets too hot for their liking. As for me, I'll... That's when they heard the impatient cacophony screech of the villain. As the giant hand came crashing down on them, Zaiku had no time but to operate on instinct. Scooping up Suyu, who launched himself at incredible speeds, bursting through the watery arm. The initial launch was so strong it placed foot shaped indents where he was standing to begin with. I thought your quirk was air manipulation! The amphibious last remarked. Izuku, no! Zaiku called out to his impromptu partner. At a moment's notice, Deku had outstretched his hand outward shooting a cone of fire directly at the criminals at the forefront of his line of sight. Predictably, the aquatic villains ducked underneath, banking on the water's glossy veil to shield them from Izuku's harsh plumes of flame. This was exactly what the Fury Boy banked on. After about 15 seconds, the water had begun to steam up. At first, the cocky villains believed all his flames would do would give them a nice hot spring bath as they prepared to rip the boy to shreds. However, before long, the water became uncomfortably hot, then painfully hot. Collectively, the villains decided it'd be best to save their own skin rather than foolishly attempt to flay Midoriya of his. The villains made a mad dash, or rather a mad swim towards the shore. However, as each one made it to land, they were each with an invisible punch to the face as Saiku launched air bullets at the criminals. Some dislodged teeth, some broken noses, and some even dislocated jaws, but they all knocked them out cold. Izuku wasn't far behind, using his quirk's capability to lift him off the ground. He traversed three feet off the surface at all times to keep a low profile, so as to not get caught by the three most presumably dangerous people there. The green-haired boy briefly preoccupied himself by second-guessing his and his teammates' actions, to which Suyu promptly told him to cut it out. Using their free time, they decided to check on Aizawa and 13. The two appeared to have the upper hand with their respective villains. Aizawa with a pale, raspy man, and 13 with a cloud of nauseous evil. Aizawa was pummeling the pale man's cronies using his quirk-erasing quirk. 
and Thirteen was in the process of vacuuming up the specter that stood before her. However, as Thirteen was in the process of sucking in his horrifying shadow with her quirk, Black Hole, he took advantage of her lack of fighting experience. In that instant, the malignant haze opened up a warp gate in front of him, and one behind Thirteen, causing her to rip out her own back. Luckily, some good had come from this situation as Tenny Ida, while the evil cloud was preoccupied with Thirteen, managed to escape the facility, making a dash towards UA to alert the other pros with what was currently happening at the USJ. After making clean work of the other two bit thugs, Aizawa had moved onto the leader of their ragdag group of misfits. Not that he had a choice anyway, as the lanky cryptid of a man made a dash towards him. Final boss! Aizawa said to himself. The pro made a dash towards the man as well. Swinging his hip to the right, the raggedy hero extended his elbow outward, aiming to deliver a devastating blow to the criminal's chest. However, the pasty villain barely caught the attack as it was buried into his ribcage. Though he was still touching the elbow and it was enough to activate his quirk. Slowly as if to taunt Eraserhead, the clothes on his arm had begun to dissolve. Then the skin on his elbow had begun to crumble. The pro pulled his arm away in time, though the flesh on his right elbow had been stripped away, with only bare muscle showing. His right arm was rendered completely useless, though he could still take out the two-bit thugs that were still trying to bum-rush him. Then suddenly, without warning, the pitch-black mutant stood at Aizawa's side, firmly gripping the smaller man's shoulder. The pressure of the grip felt like it could completely amputate the pro's entire left arm, leaving nothing but a stump. By the way, the light blue-haired man said, his voice overtly mocking in tone. I'm not the final boss. As if on cue, the giant creature barreled its balled up hand at Aizawa's face, shattering the top part of his face. Unfortunately for the pro and the students that watched, his pain would not cease there. The creature would continuously brutalize Eraserhead into submission, sickening crunch after sickening crunch until it had him pinned down. Standing over the downed hero, the villainous leader took his time to gloat. Though no one could see it, due to the mummified hand covering his face, it was clear to anyone witnessing that this creature of a human being was smiling wickedly at this sight. Save perhaps the brain-dead Frankenstein's monster that had Aizawa pinned. It wasn't All Might, that one's for sure. But the villain took extreme joy in watching this mutant violently dismantle the pro before his very eyes. What do you think of him, Eraserhead? The creep sardonically asked his victim. His bioengineered anti-symbol of peace. But you can call him Nomu. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and the editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have a fantastic day.